Hello and welcome to this demonstration of IBM InfoSphere Optim Configuration Manager or OCM. OCM allows you to manage the configurations of your servers and also of your clients. It has this ability to remote control a client to make it behave as per the best practices that you have established in your enterprise. Now there are certain situations where a client or an application might need dedicated resources so it can execute efficiently or there might be instances where a particular client or application uh, is using too many resources whereby it's starving other applications that are using the same set of resources. This is particularly true in a data sharing environment where you have a group of members that service the requests that are coming in and that go against your backend database which is a shared entity. So this could be a DB24Z data sharing or it could be a DB24 pure scale. So here is an application, a Java application that I'm going to be running that connects to a DB24Z environment uh, using a particular location alias. Now what I'm going to show today also applies to DB24 pure scale. It works exactly the same. So here you have the target server which is lab ec416 that's the port and this is the alias that this application is connected to stlec1 alias and here you can see the data source name that this application is actually using is isolate example data source uh, what this application is doing is issuing some dummy transactions and as you can see we select the current member here so it tells us which member that particular transaction ran against so let's go have a look in ocm does it have any information about the alias? So here in the open menu, there is a, an action where you can go look at the aliases uh, that this particular uh, Z server has. So as you can see, there are two aliases that are already pre-configured um, on this DB24Z environment. The STLEC1 alias goes against 91A and 91D, while the penalty box alias uh, goes against V91F. Uh, it doesn't have to be one member again it can be multiple members you can see the status at a glance uh, and with db24z version 10 you also have the ability through ocm to define uh, these aliases as well so i'm currently working with a db24z environment that's version 9.1 so i'm unable to take action here where i can add the alias on the fly but you can start to do that on version 10.1 of db2z so now that we have an understanding of the aliases, you can see that this application that I'm running is going against 91A, but it could have been 91D because the data sharing environment, uh, it depends on the availability of each member and the, the load of each member. DB2 makes the decision whether it will go against um, 91A or 91D. So it looks like in today, um, these transactions are going against 91A. Okay, so now let's go try to find our application that we have just started in OCM. So OCM has an interface called Manage Clients where it, you are able to see the clients that have registered themselves with OCM. So here at the top, I can see a client that, that I had just started, which is the Java application. What version it is, it's 3.66.38. This is STLEC1 alias that it's connected to. And there is a lot more information. If this was a WAS client, then you would have seen WAS information as well. So when I pick um, a particular client here, um, I have the ability uh, to look at information about that particular client. So for example, I'm looking here at a particular client that I've selected at the top grid. And you can see that this client uh, is the data source name, isolate example data source. It's connected to STLEC1 alias, and that's the JCC properties. But in addition to that, I have the ability to look at data source descriptors as well as driver information. So a lot of rich information is captured by OCM, and uh, it's persisted in the repository for OCM that you can look for problem determination as well. But we're not going to do that today. That probably be a separate demo so what I'm going to do now is pick the client that we want to uh, isolate here and go ahead and click on add rule so a rule is nothing but the ability to identify the client and then provide an action to take on that client so here's a rule set called my lab EC rule set I'm going to create a rule I'm just going to call it my penalty box rule 
and I'm going to specify an action here in which is isolate application transactions. So here it says in the description that if this is a problematic application, it doesn't have to be problematic, but that's one of the reasons that you might want to isolate these transactions. And it's Java, so OCM already knows that this is a Java-based rule. So I go ahead and click OK, and I can see that that rule is down below. So OCM already picked up a lot of information about this client just because we had selected it from the managed client script. So I don't need so many of these criteria, so I can go ahead and remove the ones that I don't want. The only thing that is interesting to me is that uh, it's connecting uh, using this data source name, which is isolate example data source. And that's the one that um, I would like to keep in this particular example. So this is how, this is the condition that will identify my client for me. And then I'm going to take some action. So in this case, we're going to uh, isolate this particular transaction workload uh, and put it on this penalty box location. So all the all the aliases that are available to you are already pre-listed. So you pick one, it fills in the host and the port, and we're ready to go. So I save this rule, um, and it shows you in a summary uh, grid what is the rule that I just created. You can export this rule out, and you can get it through your uh, change management approval processes um, from here. And once you have the approval to go ahead and execute this rule set, you go ahead and pick the rule set up here and go click activate. So when you activate this rule, the OCM server is going to communicate with the client, push the rule down to the client, and then the client is going to take the action that's specified uh, by this rule. And as you can see, that now all transactions executed by this particular client are going to go run on B91F. So if you remember the penalty box location was v91f and without me having to change make any changes to the application change the network or take an outage on this application i have been able to influence or remote control this application and have it switch its workload to execute on a member within the data sharing group and it could be uh, more than one member so if that's how i want to execute it but in this example we are just showing you the switch from v91a to v91f and so as long as this rule is in effect now this application will continue to run uh, on this particular member which is v91f so let me go back here and then deactivate the rule and so you can see that the rule set is no longer active and so now the OCM server is going to go back and communicate with the client and say um, this rule is no longer active so now you can see that the next transaction will go back to either V91A or V91D depending on the availability of STL EC1 alias, which is the location that we are using. So this um, highlights the ability of OCM to dynamically switch a running workload without taking an outage or without taking making any changes to the application. You have the ability now through the tool to remote control a client so that it can go run and use specific resources.